Hi everyone. In this experiment, we're going to be looking at alcoholic fermentation in yeast. And specifically what we will be looking at is we're going to be looking at whether the type of uh, carbon source makes a difference. Okay? So what you guys will be doing here is you'll be looking at whether glucose, sucrose, or starch are the preferred carbon source for yeast for fermentation. Okay? So we're going to be looking at how fast does each one of these actually work in terms of fermentation. Okay? So we're going to be looking at which one's the best one for yeast. Now we're going to do this in these fermentation tubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill these with our solutions of yeast and carbon source, glucose, sucrose, or starch. And then we're going to just completely fill them up and seal them off. Leave them at 37, well not 37, 35, 32 degrees Celsius and we're going to allow them to just kind of sit there for about 20 minutes and we're going to follow their progress. And we're going to do that by looking at how many bubbles of gas are being produced. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the amount of CO2 production and as the amount of CO2 um, builds up, as more fermentation happens, we're going to see an increase in the amount of bubbles in here. Okay, so first things first, we're going to set up some negative controls. So when you look at our test tubes, or our beakers in this case, we're going to set this up in beakers first. Beaker 1 and beaker 2 both get water. Beaker 1 gets a fermentation solution, so it gets 50 mL of glucose, but no yeast. Okay. Whereas beaker 2 gets no fermentation solution, it only gets yeast. Okay. There are two different components that this reaction relies on. The reaction requires a substrate and which is the glucose, and the reaction will require an enzyme, which is inside of the yeast. And so we're going to test in each one of these cases whether on its own this is able to produce any gas, or on its own this yeast is able to produce any gas. So these are going to be our negative controls, so there are going to be two of them. The remaining three beakers are going to get just a little bit of water just to make sure that the total volume is the same for all of them. And they're going to get some fermentation solution, depending on which one you want to use. In each case, you're going to get glucose, sucrose, or starch. And they're all going to get the same amount of yeast. Okay. Solutions in the beaker. So we have the fermentation solution and water. I'm just going to be adding the yeast suspension at this point. So our yeast is sitting in here. It's a bit of a mess because they're already starting to ferment. So I'm just going to make sure that I take here the uniform sample for each one of my each one of my beakers. So I want to make sure I mix it up well, and then I'm going to take my 15 ml. So first, up, I'm going to number two. So I'm mixing in between each time just to make sure that my cells have roughly the same suspension. So they're about the same concentration each time. So that I'm not taking a highly concentrated sample for one beaker, but a very low concentration sample for another beaker. So I just want to make sure that all of the samples are getting this roughly the same number of cells. are set up and they are ready to go. Okay. So now transferring to fermentation tubes can be a little tricky so they won't really let you just pour things in very easily so mix it and then pour it in. Okay. So fill it out as much as you can and then you have to turn it, and so don't be shy about it, don't be afraid, just let it, there you go. So now we fill this whole area here, 
And I'm going to leave it like this. I'm just going to seal it off. So we're going to be using parafilm. We have more than we need in this here. So I'm just going to take a small piece. The reason we're using parafilm is that we want to seal this off. Again, we're trying to do look at fermentation. So to study fermentation, we need to oops, we need to cut off oxygen supply. That's why we're going to seal this thing off. So there's going to be a little bit of initially oxygen trapped in there. So this area here is going to have some oxygen, but that's going to get fairly quickly used up. And so at some point, these cells are going to be stuck, and they're going to have to start using fermentation to be able to get their energy. Okay, so we just got to make sure that we seal this fairly tightly because. There's going to be a bit of pressure potentially building up in here. Well, not in this tube, but in the others. So that's one. There's number two, tube number two. That's my second negative control. Again, mix it up. And then I'm going to pour it in here. And I fill it as much as I can. And again, turn. Okay, let's open this fill. There's no more air in here. Bend it up properly. And again, seal it off with some parafilm. And it's got to stretch to be able to stick to the glass. And the glass needs to be clean and dry. So if it's not dry glass, you have to make sure that you dry it off first. And a bit of a here, I'm just going to cover that up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so here's our sample two. Sample three. Okay, so this is our yeast plus glucose. So pour that in. up here, it's a good place to start. So again, we're going to seal that off. some gas building up in here so there we go that's number three ready to go and again right now I'm not worried about the reaction starting just yet because again there's still some oxygen in there so uh, we're not too worried about that yet it has to get used up before the whole reaction really starts again mix up your number four that's your sucrose and yeast and again I'm going to fill this and just turn Start seal. Okay, number four and number five. That's our starch and yeast. Okay, mix it well. Then try to treat all your samples the same way. That's how you're supposed to be doing your experiments. Because all your samples are done exactly the same way as much as possible. But the only difference between them is your independent variable, which in this case is your carbon source. Okay, so here we go. too great to go. Just need to seal it off and then we're going to put these into the water bath and look at the results at the end. We're going to look at how the amount of gas builds up over time. The 
Okay, so as you can see here, we've just taken these out after the first six minutes or so. Um, we've just taken out of the incubator so you could see the results so far. And so right now what you can see is that there is nothing going on in one of our negative controls. That's your number one. There's no air bubbles there. Uh, your second negative control, also we're not seeing any bubbles right now. Okay, again, that's not because we're not expecting any, because sometimes there might be. Uh, number three, your glucose. You can see that we have a fairly decent amount of CO2 already produced within the first six minutes. And so you've got about 0 0.8 milliliters of CO2 already. And your sucrose looks like it's a close second here at about half a milliliter of of CO2 being produced. And right now the starch tube doesn't seem to have much going on here yet. Well, there's a little bit of a bubble up here, so it's very difficult to really estimate the size of this thing. But well, there's a very small bubble there, so maybe 0 0.05 milliliters or so. We could probably put that down. Okay, so we're going to leave these in there for a little while longer. We're going to keep collecting data, and we will post the data for you on your Blackboard.